Okay, now I thought I would show you a real, really, really radical, radical equation. So radical, radical. You've heard of pizza, pizza? This is radical, radical. And the reason why it's radical, radical is because, in fact, not surprisingly, there are two radicals. So here's the, here's the equation I want us to now solve. It's square root of 2x plus 3 equals 1 plus square root x plus 1. Two square roots, one equation. OK, how do you handle this? Well, if you remember what I was talking about earlier, you may recall that, in fact, to get rid of a square root, we have to square both sides. But also remember that I said that if, you, in fact, you square something like this, you've got a foil. And by foiling, then you'll still have more square roots in the problem. So this seems like a catch-22. Because if I bring this one over to the other side, then when I foil this side, I'm going to be in trouble. And if I bring this square root over, so I have the two square roots together, when I square, I'll still have a foiling dilemma. So this looks like I'm all foiled up. So what would I do? Well, the answer is you're going to have to square this thing out twice. Okay? The first time you square should get rid of one of the radicals. And then once you get one, rid of one of the radicals, on the other side you'll have to foil. You'll get a whole bunch of messy stuff, and there'll be one square root in there. Then you do the thing again. Bring everything else over to the other side, and then square out again. So this is going to be a, a two-squared method. You've heard of, you know, well, OK. All right, so let's now square both sides of this. If I square this side here, that square is going to kill the square root. But the thing is, I'm going to also square this side. And when I square this side, uh, I'm going to have to foil that thing out. So in fact, if I square this side, I see the following, 2x plus 3. However, now I've got to square this thing out. Now that's going to actually require a little teeny bit of work. So let me actually do that out here for you, because this might be involved. This may get ugly. OK, let's think about this. So what I want to do is square out or multiply 1 plus square root x plus 1 by itself. Now there is such a temptation to make the number 1 classic mistake that I just want to mention it once again. Number 1 classic mistake. Bling! There it is, the squaring mistake, saying that this just equals 1 squared plus this thing squared. Wrong. There's those middle terms we have to foil. Okay? So always remember, foil. OK, so let's foil out. 1 times 1 is 1, so this equals 1. Now the middle term, notice, is just 1 times this, so it's square root of x plus 1. But notice the outside term is also square root x plus 1. So I have two of them, so I see plus 2 square root x plus 1. And then what's the last times the last? Well, that's going to be the square root of x plus 1 squared. Square root of x plus 1 squared. And what happens? Well, the square root and the square, they kill each other. They cancel each other out. So it lifts the radical. And so I'm left with this equals 1 plus 2 square root x plus 1 plus, and then I just have an x plus 1. So in fact, I can do a little bit of combining here. The 1 and the 1, that makes 2. Let me write the x over here, too. And then I'm left with the 2 times the square root of x plus 1. So in fact, when you square off the, the right-hand side of this, what you end up with is 2 plus x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 1. So that's the answer. So that's what I'm going to write in here right now. So I see 2 whoops, plus, oof, that's a plus sign, not a little star. Not a little bit of a star, uh, x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 1. I just carefully squared that out and got this, except for that little font mistake. OK, is everyone happy? OK, so I'm going to get rid of all this other work. And notice what happens. Um, well, it looks really, really complicated, especially with that funny looking plus sign. But the important thing to notice is just count how many square roots you have. The original problem, I had two. Now I only have one. So now I'm going to repeat this awful process again. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take all the terms that don't have the square root with it, like these guys, and I'm going to bring them over to here. And I'm going to square root again. So let's do that right now. If I bring this x over to the other side, that's a plus, so I have to subtract it. So I have a 2x minus this x would just give me an x. If I bring this 2 over to the other side, I'd subtract 2 from both sides. If I bring over the negative 2, I have a 3 minus that 2 would be a plus 1. So that would equal 2 times square root of x plus 1. 
Now you may be wondering the following. Gee, what should I do with that two? It's not in the square root. So is that going to be a problem? Well, um, if you don't want it there, you can divide both sides by two and have it here in the denominator. But if you think about it, if I have any multiple in front of a square root, when I square it, I'm not going to have to FOIL. I only FOIL when I'm adding something. So in fact, squaring this is going to be completely fine. This would produce a 4 when I square it, and the radical would lift here. So either way is fine. Um, I don't like dealing with fractions, so I'm just going to take this and square it as it is. I'm not adding anything else to this, so I should be fine. So once again, I square both sides. See, with two radicals. I square twice. Guess how many times you have to square with three radicals? I'm not even going to tell you. OK, here we go. If I square this out, I'm going to see uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Look how quickly I square that out. Are you impressed? I hope you're impressed, because it took me years to be able to do that. Now, when I square this out, we have to be a little careful. I have a product of two things. Remember how the laws of exponents go. I have to take this thing and square it, and then take this thing and square it and multiply them together. So I have 2 squared, which is 4. And then I'm going to have the square root of x plus 1 all squared. And so what happens? That just lifts the radical. So I have this. OK, but now, as is, that is wrong. And do you see why? I'm making the classic mistake. It's usually with a negative sign out in front here. It's my classic mistake number four. Beep, beep. I call it the subtracting mistake or just the distributing mistake. The point is, you have to remember that that four has to hit everything. You have to spread that four and make sure it hits everything. So you have to put parentheses right there. This is so important. I hope you make this mistake with me right now so you'll never make it again. Right? That, that 2 squared has to hit everything in the square root. OK, well now armed with that, I can solve this. Um, this thing here, if I distribute that, I'm going to see what? Let me just write this out here maybe. This is the same thing as 4x plus 4, just distributing. OK, well now I want to solve this, so what do I do? I see it's quadratic. I pull everything over to the left-hand side, have it equal 0, try to factor, try to solve, dun, 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 get the idea. OK, so what do I have here? I have x squared. If I take this 4x, remember that's just this part here, so you can ignore that now if you want. If I take this 4x and, and subtract it over, I see 2x minus 4x gives me a negative 2x. And then here I have a plus 4, which when I bring over becomes a minus 4, but I still have a plus 1, so that produces a net gain of minus 3, and that equals 0. So here's the quadratic that I now have to solve. Remember, that quadratic came from looking at this original really complicated equation. So can I factor this? Well, I hope I can. Let's try it and see. I see x squared, so I'll put an x and x. This negative sign tells me signs will be opposite. Since there's no coefficients in front of the x, I can put them any way I want, plus, minus, let's say. Two numbers that multiply to give 3, but then subtract to give 2. Looks like 3 and 1 are a good choice. Should I put the 3 here? Well, no, because that's the bigger term. And when I subtract, I would get a, um, I would get a plus 1, a plus 2. So I put the 3 here, put the 1 here. Notice that's a minus 3x plus x is a minus 2x. Perfect. So for these two things to multiply to give 0, either this factor is 0 or that factor is 0. If this factor is 0, can you see that means that x must be equal to negative 1? Because x plus 1 equals 0 means that x must be negative 1. If x minus 3 equals 0, if I bring the 3 over, I see that x has to equal 3. So there are two solutions to this quadratic. Question is, are there two solutions to the original, the original question? Remember, the original question, by the way, didn't have those squares there. In fact, you know what? Now I'm sort of regretting that I wrote those squares right on top of it. In fact, let me just take those squares off just because, remember, the original equation did not have those squares. But with the magic of web technology, folks, using high-tech technology, oh, so look, using high-tech technology, in fact, I can just edit those things out. And so you won't see that. See the power of the web? The information superhighway working for you right now. OK, let's try and see uh, if any of these answers um, are correct. So I'm going to plug in a negative 1 for x on the left and the right. If I plug it in on the left, what do I see? I see square root of, well, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then I add a plus 3. And so what does that equal? Well, that equals the square root of 1, which equals 1. Now, does that equal, this is the question, 1 plus the square root of minus 1 plus 1. Well, minus 1 plus 1 is just 0. So in fact, this just equals 1 plus 0, which equals 1. And they are equal. So this does check. So in fact, this, in fact, is an answer. It checks. 
So now you're saying, okay, okay, fine. If that checks, this one's not going to check. So let's just save time, say it's not an answer, and move on, right? Well, wrong. We need, we need to check to make sure. Oops, oh my god, don't look at the two. That was a little glitch in the web, you know, in the web. Tick, 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 tick. No, it's me. Okay, here we go. Let's try now putting in a three. If I put in a three here, I'll see the square root of two times three is six. So this is six plus three. And that equals the square root of 9. And the square root of 9, I know, is 3. So on the left-hand side, I have 3. Now what about on the right-hand side? On the right-hand side, I want to know if this is the same. I have 1 plus the square root of 3 plus 1. Well, 3 plus 1, I know, is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So I see 1 plus 2. Look at that. This equals 3. These things actually check as well. So in fact, this is another answer. So this particular uh, rational expression has two answers, x equals minus 1 and x equals 3. So the, the moral of this story is always remember if you have a lot, of, a lot of radicals, to slowly peel them off by separating them as slowly as you can, isolating the square root. And then once you get an answer, always remember, check it back to the original one, not this one. Bleep. See, I can put it back if I want. But instead, check it to the original one. Make sure they're still OK. All right. See you next.